News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Police investigate a reported hit and run, and a delivery driver is attacked at work. News 25 starts now. This is News 25 with Unette Gentry. News 25, local coverage you can count on. Police and medics respond to a reported two-vehicle crash. It's Tuesday, February 25th. Happy Mardi Gras. I'm Unette Gentry. Well, it's unclear at this point if a driver who fled the scene of a two-car crash has been apprehended. Police located the vehicle involved in that crash at a home here in Pahrump. Traffic was diverted around the scene of a car crash that occurred on Charleston Park and Leslie Street. The driver reported that a black pickup truck had rear-ended her vehicle and fled the scene, traveling northbound on Leslie Street. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue medics and Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies arrived on scene. The injured party in the remaining vehicle declined to be transported to local medical facilities. A short time later, deputies did locate the vehicle that was driven by the suspect at a residence on Greta Boulevard. It's unclear at this time if the actual driver of that vehicle has been apprehended. And a delivery driver was taken to the hospital Saturday night after he was reportedly attacked by an individual behind a local strip mall. Two people were detained by the Nye County Sheriff's Office after a reported robbery occurred at Domino's Pizza over the weekend. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies arrived on scene on Dahlia Street right behind the restaurant for an individual who reportedly had head injuries. A short time later, deputies with the Nye County Sheriff's Office located the male and female that were described inside of Walmart. After further investigation, it was learned that, in fact, the suspect had some type of altercation with the Domino's delivery driver over money that was owed in a trade involving a video game and tattoos. That male was then arrested and transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. The female was released with no charges. The male victim in this case was transported to Desert View Hospital by Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue Ambulance. Nye County Sheriff's deputies are continuing to investigate. And the Nye County Sheriff's Office has released the identity of a woman who was killed last week when she crashed her motorcycle here in Pahrump. Nevada Highway Patrol troopers have been called in to assist Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies with an investigation into a fatal accident that occurred this afternoon off of Winchester and Hurricane Street. According to witnesses on scene, the motorcycle and a black SUV came into contact with each other. The female motorcycle rider then went off the roadway into a ditch where she was ejected approximately seven or eight feet. Deputies and medics with Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue arrived on scene. Shortly after their arrival, the female required CPR. She was then transported by ground ambulance to Desert View Hospital where she succumbed to her injuries. No one inside the SUV claimed any injury at the time of the crash. The road is closed while the investigation is underway. And the Nye County Board of County Commissioners has cleared the way for a private ambulance service to begin operating here in Pahrump. Optima Medicine wants to focus on critical care transports between Pahrump and Las Vegas, and the company believes it can provide a valuable service for the community. When we started our company, um, this was a, the uh, most obvious place that we could see could be uh, that where our services could be of use. Most of us have flown for Mercy Air. Most of us have flown for other flight programs. Um, we're very familiar with flight and how it works. We're very familiar with the benefit that it brings to the community. Um, there are lots of patients that absolutely require to be flown, um, but there are lots of patients that would benefit from a critical care transport uh, ambulance. The cost, like we talked about, is less than 10% of what, uh, what Mercy Air charges or, or what a, a flight service would charge. Um, and I also want to say something else. Um, the nature of this is not to be critical of Mercier. Uh, they do wonderful things. They do awesome stuff for this community. 
uh, the nature of this is to try to provide another level of service that we don't currently have here. Um, and it's something that we are very passionate about. Um, our goal is to provide critical care transport like we've stated. Uh, it's not typically provided by Pahrump Fire. That's our goal is to be a, a supplement to what this community has for medical services and to increase uh, what the community currently has. Uh, as Pahrump continues to grow, we, we would like to be a part of that. Many voice their support for Optima Medicine during public comment. We need a critical care transport out here. Why should our folks out here be forced to only have critical care transport from flights. Bottom line, we should be able to offer this service to them for what it costs to take an ambulance ride into, into Vegas. We've needed a second ambulance service for a long time out here. I think we ought to give them a shot and, and a couple others that uh, if they want to come in too, you know. I think um, this is a blessing that Optima Medical is willing to come out here. They're not coming out to uh, infringe on uh, on Las Vegas or uh, Prump uh, Fire's um, revenue. They're out here to provide a service to uh, critically ill patients for a ground transport. In a 3-2 vote, commissioners determined that allowing Optima Medicine to furnish service in Pahrump is in the best interest of the citizens and agreed to grant Optima Medicine permission to operate in the valley. Commissioners Leo Blundo, Deborah Strickland, and Donna Cox voted in favor of Optima Medicine's expansion plan. John Koenig and Lorenda Wickman voted against it. My reasoning is I'm still waiting for a lead study that we said we would wait for, and now we're not waiting for it. And I wanted to not exactly go out to bed, but see what other companies had to offer. Now I can't. For News 25, I'm Brad Francis. And stay tuned. News 25 will be right back. You're watching KPVM News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, Wells Fargo has now agreed to pay billions of dollars to settle with the Department of Justice. Angela Miles has those details and more in your financial news. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Topping our news, the race is on to find a cure for coronavirus. Gilead Sciences is among the biotechs working on a possible treatment. On Monday, Bruce Alward, an assistant director at the World Health Organization, said at a conference in China, there's only one drug right now that we think might have real efficacy, and that is Remdesivir, Gilead's experimental antiviral drug. Wells Fargo is agreeing to pay $3 billion to with the Department of Justice after ripping off bank customers in a sales scandal. NASA lost a legend. Katherine Johnson, the mathematician who used her skills to help send the first men to the moon, passed away at the age of 101. Johnson famously was portrayed in the film Hidden Figures. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. Thanks so much, Angela. And the National Nevada Security Site is undergoing a transformation of sorts. The Mercury Modernization Program is an effort to modernize, revitalize, and replace aged infrastructure at the NNSS. And as Brad Francis tells us, the ribbon was cut and the first building has been dedicated. And that was during a recent media event. <laughs> This is Mercury Building 1. It represents an important milestone for the National Nuclear Security Administration, serving as a pilot infrastructure initiative for standardization and efficiency. There was a lot of work in the Cold War era here at NNSS, but in the last, say, 20 years, uh, there hasn't been as much work out here. Now with kind of the state of the world, um, it's important for our national security that we continue to do the large scale experiments here at NNSS that we used to do um, several years ago. There's a big investment. This is a, a, an infrastructure investment out here that's very important for our um, subcritical experimental program that's gonna allow us to uh, ensure our nuclear deterrent going forward. We have a um, solar array out here at the site, and so the buildings are what are called net zero, which means um, 
they can be run off the solar array uh, using more of the solar power than there's actually required to run the building. So uh, we have this building and then we have plans for uh, up to six or seven additional buildings that support the, the workforce here at the site that will also be net zero type buildings. We have been supported by um, the infrastructure program in, in the Department of Energy and also by Congress who appropriate the funds for this. So they see it as an important aspect of our national security as well. During the next 10 years, more than $150 million will be invested in creating a campus-like environment with nine new modern facilities in Mercury and other locations within the NNSS. Those new facilities will help meet the needs of the workforce supporting the NNSA's national security programs. We employ about 2,500 people. They're the scientists, the engineers, the accountants, the mathematicians, uh, the labor force, uh, the craft work. That, that really is the engine that makes the work go on out, out here. We're thrilled um, because this represents the first, this is just the first of many uh, investments that the federal government's going to make in, in us out here and for our workforce. There'll be multiple buildings here. There are multiple buildings out in, out in the more forward areas that are coming as we really take ourselves out of a 1960s vintage era um, infrastructure and we move it forward to today it's going to allow us to recruit and retain the best and the brightest that we need out here um, so it's buildings it's infrastructure it's going to be water power IT all that kind of stuff so we are just thrilled with this this is great Additionally, the Nevada National Security Site is currently accepting internship applications from undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral students. The site's largest contractor, Mission Support and Test Services LLC, has opportunities in science, engineering, technology, business, and information technology fields that are available this summer. Internships are available at the NNSS's locations here in Nevada, Livermore and Santa Barbara, California, and Albuquerque and Los Angeles. Alamos, New Mexico, and at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. The program runs from May 17th through August 14th. All applicants must be U.S. citizens and meet certain eligibility requirements. For more information, you can go to nnss.gov. And if your Fat Tuesday involves eating every punchki and piece of king cake in sight, you might want to prepare for the aftermath of your overindulgence. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Scott Gabbard says there are some do's and don'ts that you should consider to avoid digestive misery. After overindulging, right, these big party nights, the one thing you don't want to do is lie down immediately after eating. You want to give yourself three or four hours. That's how long the stomach takes to start digesting the food and moving it into the intestines. Dr. Gabbard says if you have to lie down after eating a large meal, try to lay on your left side and elevate your head about six inches. This may reduce reflux up to 80%. When it comes to food-filled festivities, Dr. Gabbard says the two most common complaints are heartburn and feeling bloated or full. For people who frequently experience heartburn, he recommends using over-the-counter medications that either neutralize stomach acid or prevent its formation. Other remedies, such as peppermint oil or caraway oil, may help reduce feelings of fullness or bloating. But skip the apple cider vinegar. Dr. Gabbard says there is no research to show it can help heartburn. In fact, he says it's best to avoid anything acidic if you're trying to keep stomach acid under control. Something you can try, however, is getting up and moving around. Going for a walk may help to stimulate things to move through. So doing, you know, uh, a walk for, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour may help. Vigorous ex exercise may exacerbate reflux, too much pressure forcing all of that stuff up. So I'd keep it moderate, but a moderate walk certainly is good. Dr. Gabbard says drinking water may help improve digestion, but don't drink too much if you're already feeling overly full. It's also best to avoid drinking anything carbonated, which can make you feel bloated. All right, and remember, even if you're being responsible eating, les bottom roule. Well, we'll be right back here at KPVM where we are Pahrump's number one and Las Vegas' newest news source. This segment of the news is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyers, Nye County's injury attorneys. Don't get bullied by insurance companies. Call Jason Ernest and bully them back. 
at 775-727-9500. Welcome back. Well, Wolfenstein Construction Company Incorporated of Pahrump is honored for 30 years of continuous membership in the National Asphalt Pavement Association. The company was recognized during a recent ceremony during this association's 65th annual meeting. With more than 1,200 members, Napa represents the interests of the asphalt pavement producers and contractors before lawmakers and regulators in Washington, D.C., as well as leading research innovation, education, and marketing efforts for the industry. Wolfenstein joins Napa's 30 plus club with companies with at least 30 years of continuous membership in the association. 137 companies are currently members of the 30 plus club. Congratulations. And in other local news, the Nevada Silver Tappers are helping to support a local animal rescue group. News 25 was there as Kathleen O'Connor presented a check to Pets Are Worth Saving, which is better known as PAWS. I'm here to present a $100 donation check from the Tappers to Tressa Wask of PAWS, Pets Are Worth Saving. There you go, Tressa. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so welcome. I'm so happy to be able to do that on behalf of Nevada Silver Tappers and Miss Senior Golden Years USA. And as a side note, I ran a uh, online donation for you guys for puppy food, and I will be able to be bringing you $100 worth of puppy food on We're Wednesday. We're with all the puppies. Thank you so very much. We've got uh, five litters right now, come, three coming in, and two already with us. We have uh, Olaf and Kristoff, who are shepherd healers, and then we've got a litter of Pitskis, and then we have Burmese Mountain Dogs, two litters, different litters from those, and then we have Lab Huskies coming in too. So we're gonna have another 10 puppies coming in next Saturday. So we're gonna be overloaded with puppies. We're gonna need the puppy food. So all you puppy lovers out there, come on down and get yourself a puppy, or at least bring them something to eat because those babies are gonna be hungry. Tressa, how can people donate to PAWS? You can come down to 2031 Gamebird Avenue on the corner of Vicki Ann here in Pahrump, Nevada, or you can go to our website at www.nevadapaws.org and hit the donation button and it will take you to PayPal and you can do PayPal donations. And we are also standing in front of the thrift store, which is also on Game Bird and Vicky Ann. So come on down. It's by donation. They have some really cool stuff. Also, come see the cats. Yes, we have some beautiful cats. And we've got some beautiful dogs, too. So just go onto our Facebook page and, and view them. Matt does wonderful videos with our puppies. So take a look. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, let's take a look outside at what conditions were like earlier today through our Lerner and Rowe Weather Cam. And look at that beautiful sight around the mountains of Pahrump. We'll take a closer look at our forecast when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello and welcome back to News 25. I'm Michael Donahue with today's weather. In Las Vegas, we had a high of 61 degrees, a low of 40. Death Valley, 80, their low is 47 degrees. 67, a low of 35 in Amargosa. 66, 33 in Beatty. 55 for the high in Goldfield, 53 for the high in Tonopah. Both towns have a low of 24 degrees. 58, a low of 26 in Carson City. 56 for the high in Fallon and Fernley. 23 for the low in Fallon and 27 up in Fernley. Now today in Pahrump, we saw sunny skies. Our high today was 65 degrees. Winds coming out of the northeast at 11 miles per hour, 12% for our humidity, and our sunrise at 619 this morning. Tonight we're going to see some nice clear skies. Our low is going to be 36 degrees. It is 60 degrees outside currently with winds coming out of the east at 6 miles per hour, 36% for our humidity, and our sunset at 534 tonight. 
Now looking into our seven day, we're going to be seeing some sunny skies Wednesday and Thursday and next Monday. Do have some clouds rolling in to interrupt that flow Friday to Sunday and a little bit of clouds on Tuesday. Temperature wise on Wednesday, we're going to be seeing a high of 65 degrees. We're going to be seeing those low 70s just between 71 and 73 degrees Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And then by Sunday, we're going to drop back down to about those mid to low 60s between 63 and 65 degrees from Sunday to Tuesday. For overnights, on Wednesday all the way through Sunday, we're going to be in that 40 degree bracket between 40 and 47 degrees. And then by next Monday and Tuesday, we're going to drop down to lows of 35 and 38 degrees. And so now with that, we're going to throw it back to the desk with you, Net. All right. Thanks so much, Michael. Well, that does it for this edition of News 25. I'm Unette Gentry. And from all of us here at KPVM and Ace Country Radio, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And we will see you again tomorrow. And remember, all you Mardi Gras revelers, please celebrate safely. Good night.